The USA is one of the biggest superpowers in the world that started as an idea that formed their own countries, that fought against the biggest empire in the world and became their own country. And they started to expand, killing everything in their path and buying it from other emperors who were taking over the rest of the world. Whilst they were with this, they wondered, do we keep going? At the same time, the world was growing quicker and quicker. More people were born, more companies and more food was needed. The farmers couldn't keep up and the worry that the world would never have enough food started to spread. The reason because so much food was needed that the crops didn't have time to regenerate. But there was a solution, poop. Poop is full of nutrients to grow more crops. They give life back to them, also known as fertilizer. But where can you find so much poop to sustain a population that is this big? Close to the coast of Peru, there are these islands. But they're not that big, and nobody lives there. But they birds, spend all the day they eating and eating, there. and they end up pooping. And the poop goes on these islands and gets dry. So, on these islands, there's just a bunch of money long lying around. Well, it's poop, but that poop could get used for farms, and that equals money. This is called guami. And it has all the plants needed to survive and regenerate. So who gets there first? The British. <laughs> So they set a high price for guano, and the, so the US stood up and said, Peruvian guano has become so desirable of an article that it, it is the duty of the government to secure it at a good price. So a new law was set that said that any American citizen could go out and if they find Peru Island, they can just take it, and that would become US territory. They took about 94 islands. Now, these islands are not such a big deal, but they sparkled an idea. Could Americans take over more? Hawaii is an island that is now the 50th state. But it's not always been part of the states of the United States. Hawaii had a good relation with the rest of the world and Captain George Vancouver even gifted them a flag and they adopted it into their own flag. People came and went, but the Americans stayed. They talked about their religion, about Jesus. Some of these eventually settled and stayed on the island. Years later, these people were now full armored people. They wanted the government gone so they could get more and more money from their sugar companies. They considered themselves Hawaiian, but were more loyal to their ancestor country, the United States. So they started to plan an overthrow the gun government. At the time, the queen was Lily Okaloning, sorry for the mispronunciation, and the conflict looked like a problem inside the country. The missionaries against the rest of Hawaii, but the US ambassador managed to get military boats to come and help, so it became a military coup sponsored by the US. So the queen had to give up her power, and they put Sanford B. Dole as the president of the new Hawaiian Republic. Eventually, July 7, 1898, the U.S. took Hawaii, making it a colony. And being the U.S., it didn't become a state. It became a territory. And just another word, it's just another word for colony. And the U.S., they banned the language in schools, and by law, everything had to be in English. But what is an unincorporated territory? Well, the Supreme Court made it a new type of land called unincorporated territory, where they, the people there can't even vote. The U.S. controls them, but they don't have any rights of the U.S. citizen. Eventually, in 1959, Hawaii became a state and finally had all the rights of a citizen. representatives of Hawaii before the simple ceremonies that remake the geography of the United States, adding the 50th and southernmost state with a land area of six and a half thousand miles and a population of 600,000. At the now, I've been explaining stuff that shows that the U.S. used to be an empire. But does it still have unincorporated territories? Yes, 
and that's what I will explain now. To understand this next chapter, we will have to go back a long time. Spain is a country that used to have an enormous empire, and a powerful one. It started in 1492, and quickly grew. It found America the continent, and took territories and people. But not only in America, we are going to focus on two territories, Puerto Rico and Guam. In 1879, Cuba was trying to get in the independence from Spain, and fought for a long time until the US came and Hey, we will help you get your independence. By the way, please check out my video about the first Spanish Republic. I stopped got to do with this, but please. Of the cost of Cuba, an American boat exploded, giving them a reason, mostly Teddy Roosevelt, that really like war, to go help Cuba, to liberate them. But still the government had to convince the people, so they used the excuse, we are liberating Cuba. But Teddy wanted more, so he sent boats to Puerto Rico, that I will get into more now. And we will start with Guam. On June 20th, 1898, the US forced capture Guam, without encountering significant resistance. The island strategy's location made it an ideal coaling station and a naval base for the United States in the Pacific region. In a bloodless transfer of power, Spain ceded Guam to the United States, under the Treaty of Paris, which officially ended the Spanish-American War. Over time, the US transformed Guam into import to military outposts and the naval bases, enhancing a strategic position in the Pacific. During World War II, the Japanese occupied the islands shortly after the attack on Pearl Harbor. The United States regained control of Guam uh, the costly battle in 1944. Not many Americans knew about Guam until 2017, where North Korea threatened to send missiles there. But still, if not, Guam isn't very spoken about. The territory of Guam, that came just hours after the president warned that any new threats from North Korea would be met by fire and fury. North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury. Overnight, the small Pacific island of Guam, home to crucial American military bases and more than 7,000 U.S. forces, on alert after North Korea said in a statement its leaders are seriously considering a plan to target the territory with missiles. I will end this video with Puerto Rico because I find it the most interesting and cruel of them all. Puerto Rico became a colony and, well, the U.S. set leaders that didn't even speak Spanish and treated it more like a business, like one guy that made a sugar Additional company called Domino. provided by Domino Sugar. Domino Sugar helps you create those special memories. Pure cane, sweet memories. Domino will always be your sugar. Being the U.S., they banned Spanish in schools, banning the culture, and turned them into citizens right before the First World War, and making them fight in the trenches, making some Puerto Ricanos had to fight for the country that was taking over them. And not only that, back in Puerto Rico, Puerto Ricanos were only paid one dollar per hour in today's money, four cents at the time. And of course, the people of Puerto Rico were not happy, and they revolted. Fights are organized by Pedro Albimzu Campos. He's quite cool. <laughs> he was poor but ended up going to Harvard, and fought in the First World War, and even helped drafting the Irish Constitution. Now that is cool. He goes back to Puerto Rico and fights for independence. People join him and create a group called the Nationalists, with Nacionalistas. Doing this, to show how badly cheated Puerto Ricanos were, there's one doctor named Dr. Cornelius Rhodes, that went to Puerto Rico, and he wrote, Puerto Ricanos are beyond doubt the dirtiest and laziest and the most degenerate and thievish race of men to ever inhabit the sphere. And that makes me sick to be on the same island with them. He wants to exterminate the entire population. He even confessed to his crime, saying that he, I have killed eight and I have transferred the cancer into several more. When this letter is found, it gets very popular and nothing happens to him. So the people of Puerto Rico, this shows something. The U.S. didn't like the people of Puerto Rico. So they really start protesting. The U.S. couldn't keep ignoring this. So they sent some officers that killed some people. And then the nationalists killed the head officer. And then the officers killed the guy who killed the officer. And they took Pedro with a very weak child and sent him to jail. March 21st, 1937. There was a peaceful protest when police started shooting for no reason. 19 people are killed and over 100 are wounded. But it makes the people revolt more. In DC, they start investigating a lot, crafting Las Carpetas, 
There are just files and files and their, of people and their lives. And so much information are in these carpetas. To, cre to create an idea, they're always watching. They were manipulating so much that there was divorces, friendships broke, and again, everything is written down in las carpetas. It's quite scary how much information they stole from people without their permission. Everything, if you were a target, they probably knew everything about you. Of course, they used this to blackmail, or not giving them rights because they had a carpeta. And this made the people scared, so it worked. But the nationalists tried one more time, this time armed, and the US bombed them. Campos is soon arrested, and he was 80 years in jail. Apparently he had a lot of radiation, and for some reason, that made him not be able to speak. And to this day, Puerto Rico is still economy. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that now you understand better why the US is an empire. Boom, boom.